this is Andrea Hendricks and I want to talk to you about functions and function notation. There's a lot of material in this section and you really only need to be able to work with the function notation. But let me just give you some background information. If I say to you um, the word function just in everyday terminology, what do you think of? I usually think of something that works well. And whenever we talk about that for a mathematical equation, to work well means that for every value of x, there is only one value of y. Another way to think of it is for each input, you only get one output. Now, think of this with, for instance, like your um, name and your social security number. Right, if I was entering your social security number in our school's computer system, there should only be one name that corresponds to that, otherwise we would be in a mess. So actually we say that name is a function of social security number. Because that means for each social security number, there's only one name that corresponds to that. Okay? Now that works the other way around as well. Social security number is also a function of name. Right, if I didn't know your social security number, I could search on your name and I would get your individual social security number. So that means in that case that for each name, there is only one social security number. Now this works for many things. You can think of cell phone numbers, um, Husband and wife, hopefully one is a function of the other, right? There's only one person that they can be married to, at least in most states. Um, so what would not be an example of a function? Like if I said to, um, for each state, name the senator, Well, that's not a function because every state corresponds to two senators, right? So there would be two names that would be associated with each state. So that would not be a function. <clears throat> so you can think of something that mathematically works well. It functions appropriately, meaning that for every input, there's only one output. So most of the equations that we're going to talk about in this course are going to be functions. There's already one we've talked about that is not a function, um, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But like if I have this linear equation, y is equal to 2x plus 4, you've already seen this, right? For every value of x, how many y values did you get? Remember in our table, for every value of x, there's only one y. So we say here that x, or y rather, is a function of x. And mathematically, the way we say this with notation is we say y is equal to f of x. All this means, this is not f times x, this is saying that y depends on the value of x. So this is where we're going to get into what you have to do in this course for this particular section. If I say f of x is equal to 2x plus 4, and I want to find f of 0, well, f of x is nothing more than y. So whenever I say find f of 0, that's saying to find y when x is 0. But you know mathematicians, they love to invent symbols for everything, so that's why we have this shortened notation. So all I'm asking you to do there is to plug in 0 for the value of x 
and simplify. So that does not mean f times 0, it's just f of 0. Evaluate the function at 0. So that would give a 0 plus 4 or 4. So another way to look at that is that this corresponds to the point 0 comma 4. If I have f of negative 2, same thing, I would say replace the x with negative 2. So f of negative 2 would be negative 4 plus 4 or 0. So this is saying if I looked on the graph at negative 2, 0 would be a point on the graph of y is equal to 2x plus 4. Now some of these require you to plug in other things besides just um, numbers. Like if I have f of x is equal to 3x minus 5 and I ask you to find f of a, that just says replace the x with an a and there's nothing you can do to simplify that. What if I ask you to find f of negative x? That would say replace the x with negative x and then simplify because 3 times negative x is negative 3x minus 5. Okay. Now let's look at something a little more complicated. If I have f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 and I want you to find f of negative 4 so this says everywhere you see an x, replace the x with a negative 4. Keep the other expressions in the equation the same. And then you're just going to use order of operations to simplify that. So f of negative 4 would be 2 times negative 4 squared is 16. Negative 3 times negative 4 is plus 12. And then plus 1. So we would get 32 plus 12 plus 1, which if I'm adding right is... 45. Okay, so that's all you need to know here. There's some terminology in this course about what x is called as the domain. That is, all the values of x that you can plug into the function are called the domain. All the output values are called the range, and you can use the graph to be able to find that. Um, you don't need to know that for this course. You're going to get into that and into the next course that you take. Um, I did mention briefly that there's one function that you've already looked at, or one equation that's not a function, and that is x is equal to 3. Because do you remember in our table, for those um, solutions, every x value was a 3. In other words, you can look at this as the order pairs 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, and it goes on forever, right? But this is telling me there's an x value of 3 that has more than one output, right? In fact, 3 goes to every value for y. And so this is an example of an equation that is not a function. But pretty much everything else that we talk about in this course is a function. So the primary thing that you need to do in this is to be able to use function notation. Now we'll say one last thing is that you don't always have f of x. It could be g of s is equal to s squared minus 4. If you want to define g of negative 3, whatever variable is inside the parentheses is where you're replacing. So you would put in a negative 3 for the s and then simplify to get a 9 minus 4 or 5. Okay? So if you have any questions on how to use the function notation, don't hesitate to call me. Thank you. Bye-bye.